SMT Nation, we back. We've got two stories. I'll link both in the description. The first one is on the U.S. cell site count. That's pretty absurd. Count nears half a million. <laughs> Nationwide, of almost a half a million cell towers. That's crazy. And then the second story, U.S. Cellular expands the millimeter wave network. What they do with their fixed wireless home internet plan, uh, they've gone unlimited. That's good to hear and see. So we'll discuss both of these articles in the description. All right, so the cell site count it says here that according to whatever data they're using from the CTIA, 419,000 cell sites now exist across the U.S. The Trade Association recently published its annual survey of its wireless network operator numbers, report that helps clarify and quantify some of the industry's regulatory issues. That's pretty darn crazy. All right. And some of those sites that have been up and running have been decommissioned and are no longer operational. Like there's still some old legacy gear that's probably up on monopoles. And that could be from like 3G, CDMA, IDEN, right? Those things might still be up and have gear on them. And then there's some old sprint sites that T-Mobile probably will not upgrade or have taken down or whatever. So there probably is still some fluidity there. But it says more wireless infrastructure is a big part of the successful launch as key federal infrastructure sitting reforms continue to pay dividends by easing barriers to deployment. That's true. The only way you're going to get carriers and internet service providers <clears throat> excuse me, to build sites, you got to make it easy for them. You can't put obstacles in front of them, right? So it says by the end of 2021, there were 400, almost 419,000 operational sites across the nation. That does not account for all the new 5G base stations added to existing cell sites. So you put multiple carriers on some of these monopoles, right? And some of these rooftop sites. And who knows, maybe these numbers are off. They might be higher, right? So if, if there's like a rooftop in the middle of downtown Cleveland, and Verizon is up there, and then T-Mobile adds their gear up there. You know, don't you count it as another site? Uh, so I don't know. I'm not sure how they calculated the numbers. It says here that the wireless industry as a whole added 70,000 new cell sites between 2019 and 2021, up from the 42,000 sites constructed during the period from 16 to 18. Folks, this is um, this is what we call the densification process. Our network grid is getting denser. That's a good thing. Cell tights, uh, cell towers, and and the the grids that they're on are starting to tighten up. Less space between each site. Companies improving their cell density to improve quality signal and increase capacity on their networks as consumers continue to use their devices for more and more of their day to day productivity and entertainment. I will argue that in most instances, all this has to do with video consumption multimedia consumption, more and more people watching Netflix. The carriers have added tons of entertainment perks to their plans. So people that are on AT&T that got HBO Max included and people that are consuming YouTube and Disney Plus and Netflix on us. And then also the fact that everybody video calls everything, you know, like these, these things are why, you know, these wireless service providers have done this. It says here that U.S. wireless providers have invested $35 billion in 2021. So I'm, I'm guessing they just take the CapEx from each maybe um, mobile carrier, add that together, and you get your CapEx. We've heard numbers from AT&T like 20, uh, $21 billion, right? That includes their fiber build-out and their wireless. Uh, you know, Verizon, I think, was at around 17 or $18 billion for a couple years in a row. Same kind of situation. How much of that is mobile and how much of that is fiber? And T-Mobile is essentially just a mobile provider. So their 10, 11, 12, 13 billion dollars, whatever it is, gets added to that completely. So that's probably where I think we fall. Most of them are offering a CapEx spend of about 10 to 13 billion dollars. So they're spending, folks. And we're starting to see, you know, them trying to monetize this with fixed wireless access, right? And selling the network and getting as many people on these plans as possible. Uh, in terms of Crown Castle, you may not know who this is, but this is a, a cell phone tower owner. And then what they do is they lease the cell tower space to carriers. So they put up all their radios and antennas on Crown Castle gear, including small cells. Here in Cleveland, Crown Castle has an incredible small cell footprint. And 
they've got 40,000 macro cell towers themselves. And they've got 115,000 operational small cells. And you, there's other companies. you got SBA Communications. They've got 30,000 cell towers across North and South America. It says here American Tower, which is very prevalent here in the Cleveland area in my county as well. 43,000 cell towers in the U.S. So these companies are the ones that usually erect the tower sites, right? They put up the monopoles, or th- th- sometimes they get the leases for like the rooftop sites, and then they allow the carriers to put their gear on these sites. Folks, this is a lot of base stations. This is a lot of cell towers. You know, here's China, for example, at 1.4 million 5G base stations in China. But China has like over a 1.5 billion people, right? 1.6 billion people. People think they're lying. I don't know if it's more 1.8 billion. We have a lot less people. <laughs> so maybe we would have more than them if we had equivalent populations. But our population is also um, most of it in dense urban areas. That's where you see a lot of these cell sites. What do you guys think of these numbers? Oh, that is astonishing. And I don't know if they're counting small cells, 5G nodes, millimeter wave. I have no clue. All right. Interesting stuff. Uh, Last one for the day, just a bit of an update. U.S. Cellular expands millimeter wave network. They intro an unlimited home internet plan. All right. So one of the things when I covered this original story where they started to do uh, fixed wireless access millimeter wave home internet is they were selling it here uh, and they were selling it as a limited data plan, meaning it had a finite amount of usage. You couldn't use unlimited. Well, it looks like they've changed their, their mind. They've pivoted for the positive. They're going to be selling the millimeter wave fixed wireless access home internet for 50 bucks a month, and they will allow you to do unlimited. Finally, having limitations on the amount of data you can use on your home internet is kind of, it's, it's kind of anti-consumer, right? I, it is anti-consumer. People need more than 1.2 terabytes in some instances. Maybe they need 1.5 tera. Maybe they need 2 tera. There's nothing that's going to hurt the the provider to allow them to use an unlimited connection. You know, arbitrarily limiting it just hurts the consumer in some months where they might need it more. Uh, people want to be productive. People want to do what they want with their connection. I'm not saying go ahead and just like torrent, you know, 7,000 different seasons of whatever, you know, or movies. But come on, man. We're just done with the data cap era. That just needs to end. Uh, According to the provider, uh, what they're going to be doing here in U.S. Cellular is they've got access to 4G, 5G, and millimeter wave in-home connectivity, home internet service. They're offering uh, what seems to be about a 300 megabit downlink speed tier. Okay, so that's that's good. I like 300 megabits per second. I don't know what the uplink is there. Uh, But what they're probably doing here is if it's anything like we see from like Verizon and T-Mobile, they're going to send a gateway to these people's homes, get it up in the window, and then use like nodes and small cells. And I don't know if they can just simply do it through macros to try to reach more people. But millimeter wave is that kind of technology. It's very directional. And it, you probably want to try to get those small cells as close to the sites as possible where people put their gear to the end user. Uh, but it is nice to see that they are finally offering unlimited home internet to all their customers in these available footprints. I don't know if they're going to continue to grow the service or if it's going to be a success, but I'm glad to see that the unlimited plan does exist. It says here, if you bundle home internet with a new line of mobile service, you can also get a $20 off monthly bill. So they're starting to bundle and give discounts just like what Verizon does with its plans and, and T-Mobile with like Magenta Max. It says here that you got to go auto pay and paperless billing and in, and be on a 36 month installment contract. So you, you're going to be on this locked in for a while here. You're essentially signing a contract. Parts of 10 cities covering 125,000 households in 30 cities. Uh, they are, I guess, expanding. It says here it's available in Medford, Oregon, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Des Moines, Iowa, Madison, Wisconsin, and Knoxville, Tennessee. And they will be expanding it to more households and 50 new communities. So keep it locked here to the SMT YouTube channel. As this service continues to grow and expand, uh, we will update this information at a later time. Comment down below what you guys think of US Cellular and what they're doing, um, kind of shifting things in a good way. And then the US cell site count, incredible. <laughs> These numbers are going to continue to increase, folks. Comment down below. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. 
Like, share, subscribe for more. Turn on the bell notification icon to never miss an upload. Links in the description for my Patreon, my Twitter handle if you want to interact with us there, and my Gmail address for all business inquiries. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.